Um, one of my uh, clients, uh, Hugo, uh, Hugo Malara, uh, said he watched a video the other day on uh, Grant Cardone. I like Grant Cardone, by the way. I, I think he's very entertaining. Um, and he's very focused on sales, which I also like. And um, he's a very smart, obviously, he's a very smart businessman. He can fill up a casino in Las Vegas and everything. So, but this one video we watched, um, uh, I thought it was very interesting. I thought there was a lot of takeaways from that video. Uh, I thought he, uh, was he, uh, and I had a call. What did he do right or wrong in that video? What did you guys, what was your takeaway? What did you think he did right? Did you think, did he do anything wrong? Or what's your opinion on that video? Who wants to start? Go ahead, Chantel. Um, I think there was a lack of like stroking and nurturing and compact in a way. Yeah, because I put myself in that gentleman's situation and it almost felt like, att like attacked, right? Like he was being a little attacked. But, but of course, that's we follow Grant well, but and that's just how he is. But I think he could have been a little more finesse and nurturing and really trying to relate to that guy and, and his struggles and where he's at. Okay, so you, you, were, you were a little sympathetic towards the prospect, uh, the guy on the phone. You, and you, yeah, uh, so you thought Grant was, uh, didn't show a lot of compassion to the guy. Yeah, like he could you know, just stroke it and nurture it a little more, but still get his point across. I I, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that's interesting. Ani, you want to jump in on that or? I mean, I love Grant. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way he sells. I really do. Um, as far as the negatives, I think he did a lot of positive. I love the fact that he said, you know, you're not doing this for me. You're doing this for your family. You know, for What's that? Well, oh, now what do we call that? What do we call that? I did I lose your audio? Yeah, say that again. I said, what do we call that when he was talking about, when you start asking questions up to a man who's not making enough money, wants to make more money, and you say, are you protecting your, your children, your family, and everything? What is that? That's the, that's the million dollar rule, isn't it? Emotions. Emotions, thank you. Who said that? It hurts. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else, jump in here. Was he using emotions? Was he using a lot of emotions in, in, in the way he was going after this guy? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean. He got him. He the pain, him to I mean, yeah. there was a lot of, the, the guy felt a lot of pain. And I, I think, you know, if he could just understand it's an investment rather than an expense, he could totally change his whole family life around, you know, but. Did you, did, what was about the money part? Did you, did you hear any, uh, was he very, uh, with the money part, was he almost attacking him? Um, why don't you, why aren't you brave enough to spend this money? It's only on a credit card. Did you hear some of that stuff? Did, anyone, did you pick up on that a little bit? Yeah, he was saying something like, I'm trying to remember, you know, <laughs> the, the part where he was like, look, you're not going to pay for it. Charge it on the card. You're not paying for it. The customers are paying for it. I had a little issue. I had a little issue with that. Uh, I, 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 something like yeah, that. He was yeah, like, don't, don't, don't pay, pay. Your customers yeah. are paying for it. Something like that. And that was, guy, that was kind of a little, uh, that was a little, a little salesy for me. A little bit of bullshit, really. Uh, you're obviously you're paying for it. Put it on a credit card. Uh, and then he did the analogy. Well, you buy a car and you spend 12,000 for your car, but your car depreciates. You give me money and we teach you sales. And this is something that if you, you, you learn sales, it, you will appreciate. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's where he was going with that. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Come on. Somebody chime in on this. We, who did their homework? I didn't do my homework, but I watch uh, Grant quite often, probably at least once or twice a week. And this kind of uh, goes in with what you guys are saying and what you teach, Claude. Uh, what I like best about Grant is his likability. Was he likable in that? You didn't see the video. But I didn't I see it. I think the guy was making lots of excuses. It sounded like to me he was making lots of excuses. 
What about likability? What about likability, Kyle? That's the thing. Do you think he was very likable or very assertive and intimidating? I think he was being intimidated, but that's his personality. That's how Grant is. Yep. That's, that's Which how is why he I sounds. like him. But to me, it's, it sounded like, you know, the guy was the, the guy. He's not. He's not in the poor house. He he said he made what eighty thousand dollars a year. That's what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So. So if you're making eighty thousand dollars a year, I mean, four kids. He was bringing up his wife. It sounded like he he wasn't sure of himself to make the commitment for himself. Thousand is poor. To make the purchase. That, that that's just how. To me, sorry, that's the poor house. Uh, I think the guy could, especially with kids, you gotta you gotta put yourself in his position. Wife, four children, bills, mortgage, all these different things. He could totally be. What I loved what Grant said was. Add another zero to the eighty thousand. That I like. True. Yeah, absolutely loved it. You, that's thinking too small. Thinking absolutely too small. I like I like that a lot. He seemed very, um, but he seemed very assertive, almost to the point of intimidating the guy. That I took away a little, but I love that one line. Don't you want to add a zero to it? Okay, don't you want to protect your family and, and stuff like that? Uh, and the guy, it was really a money commit. He was scared to spend the money, obviously. Do we get clients like that all the time? Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Uh, what is, go ahead. Confident is at the, towards the end when he said, you know, this is a money back guarantee, right? And Grant said, yeah, this is a money yeah. back guarantee. You know, if you don't like it, I'll give you the money back. Uh, I think that was a little sense of security in a sense. That but, was uh, that was the last straw on the camel's back. He needed something. He was getting very close. The guy went from a four or five to maybe a seven and an eight, and he had to get him up to a nine ten. And the guarantee was the nine ten. If you want, if you listen to this video once or twice, and see where he's going with it. He's he's got a very interesting style. He's very assertive. He's I, very, I don't think confidence is an issue. Misha, go ahead. I was going to say that I found that he used emotion, but he used it negatively. In what way? Instead of, in what way? Instead of stroking him, he was, you know, kind of putting the guy on the attack, making him feel bad about the things he wasn't doing instead of doing the things that were going to be positive for him and his family. Is that a good way to say? Uh, that's very interesting you brought that up, and you're correct. He was almost, you know, almost, don't you love your family enough to make this investment kind of thing? Uh, right. Do you think that's a good way to, do you think that's a, a productive way to sell? Honestly? It was effective in his case. It was no. effective. No, take, no doubt about it. Donald, no. you look like you're dying to say something here. It wasn't. <laughs> no, I mean, I, Greg's just a little uh, pushy, I think, uh, he, but his tactics work for him. They, you got to figure out the tactics that work best for you. So, and that's, uh, that's what's been getting him through is his pushy salesman. Did you see the salesman in the background, by the way? If, if, you, if you've watched it before, watch, I, this is the part I didn't like. They were in the background snickering, is, is that, if that's the right word. Right. Uh, what, did you, what was your feeling on that, James? Well, um, if he was on the, on the when he's on a, a sales call, then the, the camera should have been moved and just focus on him. Because to me, it seemed like they both were working deals. And if you're trying to um, set up a, a video, <clears throat> you want to show everything else in the background. There was a lot of background noise, but there were two sales guys in the back, almost snickering, going, oh, watch the boss do his magic. Watch him take over. Watch him manipulate this guy. Right. I, now, I <laughs> for him, it, it was, with you, Claude, it's like there's a rope, and you slowly pulling people. Tell, them now, your nick tell what, everybody your nickname for me. Um, you're, slippery, you're slippery than a grease pig. Isn't that what? Isn't that the best compliment in the boy in the world for a kosher boy? <laughs> no, but, but, but your sales tactics, so or you, um, you try to convey across to us is, maybe the person is on the. They say they they have two ropes, a uh, one rope, and the person is holding it, and you're slowly pulling it with tact. 
you know, um, stroking the ego. And with, with Cadone, it's like he just pushing you off the cliff. He's a he's a look, he's aggressive. He is. He's aggressive, but it works for him. How about fishing? I like the I heard this or read this once somewhere. When you go fishing and you let out some line and you see the bobber start going, a fish is playing with the bait. What does the amateur what does the amateur fisherman do right away? Yank it. He yanks it right away. That's kind of what Grant's doing. Yanking it. What does the professional fisherman do? Yeah, give a little slack, then reel in, give a little slack. Let out more line, right? Strip line. line. Yeah. Let out more line. Let the fish feel comfortable. And then when the fish takes the bait, then you go and pull it. Right. Okay. And that's kind of, uh, sales to me is almost like a seduction with you using words, the right words at the right time. What, what, I, what I thought of immediately is, and please disagree with me if you want to. When that guy got off the phone and he gave him his credit card and everything else, I got the feeling that that guy's wife was going to kill him and that he was going to call the next day and uh, what do they call that, remorse? Did anyone get that feeling? Totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, I could see what he was trying to do <clears throat> when he's saying – it's four thousand, and you have a possibility of making additional hundred thousand. So, in other words, you got to take a chance. You got yes. He did that very well. He did that very well. No risk, no reward, and everything like that. How come I felt sorry for this? Is unusual because I teach how to kill animals. And actually, should should the salesman ever? Here's a question I have here to the group: Should the salesman ever feel sorry for the prospect? I have kids, my spouse will kill me, I just started a new job, money is tight. Should we as the salesperson ever, is that, is that, is that the end of us making money if we start feeling sorry for the prospect? What do you think? A little bit. What do you mean? Elaborate. Well, I think you have to determine the difference between those being excuses and putting up walls and being the, the and being reality where you just can't do business with them right now. You don't want to, you can do business, but you don't want to do business because you feel sorry for them. No. Not empathy, sympathy here. Okay, no. I mean, there's the reality of things happen and it's not the right time for them because financially they can't do it. But as far as ever, them just using the, the, a lot of that is just excuse. There are excuses and barriers, barriers that people are putting up because they don't want, it, it's painful. And so your line is the best ever, which is put me in pain, tell me a story, close me. Yeah. That's the best line I ever heard from any mentor, or Grant Cardone or Josh Smith. And all the other ones, Mike Ferry, and, and on and on and on. That's the best one. I, I, I really, anybody want to join in on that? Should we feel sorry for the prospect at some time? Are we doomed to make a sale if we are too sympathetic for the prospect? Should we feel sorry for the prospect? or Feel sorry for not necessarily, but understand the suitability of what you're selling them. Is it right for them? And accept the fact that sometimes it's not, like Audrey was saying. I sometimes use the insanity line. You know, if you, if Mr. or Mrs. Prospect, I agree with what you say. I know times are tough, money is tough, but you're looking to change your world. And if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're, you're just going to come back to me five years from now. And we're going to have the same conversation. You have to do something dramatic and take a risk. And I'm either part of the solution or part of the problem. You're, you came to me because you have a problem. Can, we can solve that problem, but it's gonna. But we have to work out the financial part, and that's going to be a sacrifice, and it's going to be a little scary. Can we move forward, or are we done? Do you want a life of mediocrity, or do you want to take a chance right now? Boom. That that would be my stuff. Fred, go for it. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, I think what Grant was missing in this uh, sales process was that. He was there just to get that credit card number and close the deal. And yeah. probably because of the fact that he's the, you know, he's the big shot. He's got a lot of things to do. 
and probably the salesperson called him in because he was not able to close the deal on him. So he did not spend the time to explain to him how he can really help him out and how he can, you know, by doing, by getting into his program and spending that $4,000 today, what he can accomplish over the next year, which is going to be tremendous. So that I think was the missing link over there. It was just like, give me your credit card, let's do it. And in the meantime, just you know, throwing a few things at him that, you know, uh, how good we are and how we can, you know, make you better. But if he had spent at least a couple of minutes, exactly what you were talking about, to explain that, I think it would have been a much, much easier process. And the guy would have given him the credit card with a pleasure uh, versus being scared of giving that credit card away. I, I think it was, I agree with you. I never thought about it till you brought it up. That was a takeover like they do in car sales. He, he comes from a car sales background and I think he took over from another salesperson. I agree with you. And I, he did not give any specifics on his program. There were very little uh, hard information there. I, absolutely. And that, it, what worried me about it, it was, it was so hard, pre so it was a lot of pressure and intimidation. And then he got the credit card. And I, I'm always worried about remorse later. Okay, yes, we want to we wanna get people emotional. We want to uh, get them to imagine themselves and their lives changing. But we also have to apply the logic at some point. Otherwise, we're going to get that phone call the next day, which breaks all our hearts, where they say, you know, I thought it, I thought it over. And my wife's mad at me and my husband's mad at me and I'm, I'm going to rip up the contract. I don't want to do this anymore. And I, to me, you can get people emotional, but in their heads, they have to logically justify why they made the purchase because the emotion, is, the emotion is temporary and fleeting. The logic goes right to the subcon. It stays there and says, right. oh, this makes sense because. Okay. I, I, think the word, I think the word here, Claude, is that, um, uh, it was Grant that closed the deal. It was not the customer who closed the deal, which makes oh. a huge difference. I mean, you always say that, you know, you ask the customer for a second time, I'm sorry, what do you say? You know, just making sure that the customer is agreeing to close the deal. That did not happen in that video. It was it just was, like, and giving me the card, uh, card to get it done with. There was no post sell in that, no after sell, after gut selling. Which what, I what about what about there's no benefits if you don't I don't if I was put under pressure and I probably have throughout my life at some point been put under pressure to spend money and I just kind of wanted it and wanted you to shut up and I did whatever under pressure how can I possibly embrace what you're selling me if you don't even take a minute or 20 seconds to care about me to let me know I'm making the right decision. This is gonna change your life. This is gonna help you. I, I, I don't know how, you know, you're just spending the money and there's gonna be nothing but regret. It, it, you're not giving them any cookie, no nurturing or stroking. And I just don't know how you can have a happy customer that way. You have to give them something, let them know you made the right decision. Uh, this this is going to change whatever. I, and if there's none of that, I hope he gets his money back. <laughs> I had the feel. I, I had the feeling. I don't know. I'm just taking it. I had a feeling that this guy spent the money and then a day or two later called and said, um, you know what, let's forget about it. I, I, because when it's just 100% emotion and intimidation and high pressure, Without the prospect, you know, we want to make the prospect become the salesperson. We want them to justify the purchase. We want them to say, you know what, this is a. I'm glad you talk. I'm glad we had this conversation. I really feel good about this. I like you. I trust you. Where do I sign? Here's my visa card. Here's my contract or whatever. If you can get the prospect to feel that strongly about your credibility, my gosh, that's isn't that a better environment rather than that high pressure. I think he comes from, you can tell that he comes from a car background, can't you? Have we all met, have we all met this car salesman? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The and, one thing, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, why not just like adding the wife in, you know, just like we do in real estate. Well, who's the decision maker? You know, maybe he could have. 
always the wife her, had her on the call or called her the next day you know to put her, her mind at ease too if he feels like you know her reaction was going to be the biggest thing from holding him back because he did say oh my wife's going to kill me well maybe just bringing her on board and getting her al aligned too uh, absolutely the one thing I did like, I, he was, I, he embraced tenacity. He did not give up. He stood on that phone. He was not going to bail or quit. Uh, he was going to be on that phone for as long as it took um, on that. Do we sometimes see salespeople quit too early? Give up too early? Yes, I heard someone once say, "I'm um, make a sales call," and then the first thing out of their mouth was, "I'm sorry to bother you." And I thought, Ugh, "Why are you even calling them? I mean, yeah. you're already <laughs> apologizing. You didn't even say hello. I'm sorry to bother you, but can I sell your house? I mean, oh, how you could know, you expect to get anything?" I, yeah, that's like the line when people call up. Okay. Oh, uh, I just need a minute of your time, or can I have a minute of time? Don't ask permission, just go for it, you know? Because if you ask a guy like me, oh, could, Claude, can I just have a minute of your time and you're not a client or something? No, you gotta set an appointment, I'm busy, goodbye. Oh, you know, that's a, to me, that's a turnoff when a sales, a strange salesperson calls and says, can I have, can I have a, just five minutes of your time, which we all know will be 35 minutes. <laughs> but how about I'm sorry to bother you? I mean, is that a confidence thing or is that a... Yeah, that's a lack of confidence and insecurity. Mm -hmm. you know, I like to call up people and say, Audrey, you got a problem. And you're going, who, what? Who, what do you mean I have a problem? Now I got you asking questions. Now I'm getting you emotionally involved. Now I fix it. Or I get into an into, uh, some kind of conversation with you. That, you know, I love pattern interrupts, as you know. Anything that shocks the senses that sounds different. I, I love doing that. Well, Ani, what was that great? Ani, you're the, you're the master of pattern interrupts from our last guy. Well, what's a couple of those uh, you and, uh, uh, pattern interrupts you were talking about last week, you and Chantel? I mean, in Arizona, you know, it's boiling hot here. So, you know, I'll just get on the call. They'll laugh. I'll just say, hey, I need your help. I just fried an egg on the hood of my car. I want to know if you had any salt and pepper. I love that. Quick. I recorded one and the, gosh, like hearing the lady pauses, like, is this real? And then she just starts laughing. <laughs> And then, and then she just opens up like an open book from, from there. Or I'll say, you know, <laughs> I'm more puzzled than a puzzle. How the heck did that house not sell? Yeah. I don't know, just for variations. Yeah. yeah. I'll call up. Oh, you got to help me. This is driving me crazy. You got that beautiful house on Main Street. Why didn't it sell? What's wrong with it? What do you got, a pit bull training school next door? What, what is... What, what's the matter with that property? And, this, and then they get emotional. Oh, my realtor or the more. And, then, and all of a sudden you're having a conversation and that's what we want. An adult to adult conversation as quick as possible to get over the, you know, the, the, uh, oh, it's another salesperson calling me, you know, and all that free stuff. Daniel, Daniel Scotty, you're awfully quiet today. Uh, I, I think the difference between you and Cardone is you, you, you produce a sort of a compassion when, you, when you're talking to someone. And they get that feeling that you, you actually care, but you're telling them what's real. Where Cardone is all about the bottom line. It's about the money. Uh, listen, I'm greedy too. I love, you know, I'm in, why are we in business? To make money today. And I will do certain moves and things like that. Which kind of brings up, did you, anybody hear the God line that he used in there? I was a little uncomfortable with that with the line, he said, I wrote it down here, God frowns on people who go to church and ask him to do their work. Did he, anybody pick that up? Yeah. That right. God line, what did you think about that line? I was a little uncomfortable, Misha? I thought that was definitely crossing a line. It's one thing to implore upon your higher power, it's another to use it against somebody. I agree. Yeah, I concur, not only that, but then you know, to add to that, he questioned the man's manhood. Mm -hmm. In what part? Uh, tell me out with that. Where when was he that? said, he, when he's, he's mentioned about, 
Um, what you just say about the um, God and you know you going to church and um, asking God to do ask, your work. Thank, yeah, thank you. And um, also, he he said it's your duty to take care of your wife and kids, or something along that line. So you know what? You need to bash him with that. And I think that's to me he was crossing a line. He questioned the man's manhood, his his ability to take care of his family, and also the religion. Isn't that yeah? But it, is that all back to emotion again? When you challenge a guy, hey, you know, uh, can you provide? You can't, you know, you're not providing for your family. You're not giving them the things they want. Isn't that one of the things salespeople do? Yeah, but at that point, I would probably have hung up on him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, God, I think, is the limit. God, politics, uh, religion, sex, and, and, right. and the latest L.A. diet. Okay, these are, these are things you, you, you these are things you stay away from in, at dinner parties and in sales. It, it, uh, if you're smart, you stay right. away from that. We do want to make it emotional on it. I got to tell you, he did get he did get the result he wanted. He made the sale. It was a very forceful sale. He used a lot of moves. He used intimidate. He, he was very uh, all over the, this guy. Who talked more in that conversation? That, uh, in the, uh, did, he, did he utilize the 75-25 rule there? No, no, Grant was doing most of the talking. Yes. Yeah. And I think he found a personality that was not st that strong willed, and he overpowered him. But what's right. a better way to sell is to get the prospect talking more than us, which is real difficult for me sometimes, you know, and I get that prospect telling their story, get them emotional. You, and you just feed the questions like a psychiatrist would, like a good doctor would. Woo. I think the thing is to make them feel good and you can get anything you want. Make, ooh, I like that. Go ahead, Fred. That's what you do. Yeah, one of the things that uh, you always teach is to uh, have them drop their guards, uh, which basically says, hey, and no is, uh, is uh, okay too. He never, ever implied anything like that. To give the guy the opportunity, maybe he thinks about it. He basically, not, not to think about it, but to throw down his guard for a second and be comfortable in making a decision. He basically was like a bulldozer going through and no opportunity for the guy to even think about a no, which is something that, as you mentioned, the regret is gonna to come to, to, to bite him probably in a day or two, uh, coming back and asking for, for his money back. I think one of the, a good point, thank you. I think one of the best points of the gut sales method is to do the opposite uh, that they're expecting, reverse psychology, whatever you wanna call it. Listen, could you do me a favor? It's okay, we're here for you. Could you just say no to me today if you're not comfortable with this? But the problem will still remain. And you might have regrets after we get off this phone call because I think we have a solution for you that's practical. Where should we go from here? Boom, stuff like this, these moves. These psychological moves, whoa, good conversation. And we're out of time, it goes so fast sometimes. Thank you all for participating. Have a wonderful, safe 4th of July. We've had fires here in uh, Winter Park, Colorado. We, have, we had nine fires in the state of Colorado uh, 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 Sunday still here. So uh, uh, everybody be safe. Have a great 4th of July, and thanks for joining us today. A lot of good stuff. Give yourselves a round of applause. Everybody take care. Thank you. Thank you, Claude. Take care. Let me find some good music to go out on here. Ooh. Oh, here's a good one. I love the oldies. Sorry. Who knows this? Who, who is this? Quick. Call and out. Very good. What song? Man killer. Close. Man eater. Man eater. Man eater. Very good. Nice going there.